Hey guys, today we're going to talk about angles of polygons. Okay, so a polygon is a many-sided figure. The sides must meet at the endpoints, and only two sides can meet at any one endpoint. There are no curves. Uh, there's no crossing or anything like that. So these are polygons right here. Okay. These things over here, not polygons. Okay, so why aren't these polygons? Well, this has got a curve. Um, this does not meet at the endpoints. Neither does this. Uh, this has got a curve. This crosses over itself. It's got more than two corners that uh, meet at... Uh, at one at one vertex okay so none of these are polygons all of these are polygons okay all right so first thing uh, parts of a polygon the vertex a vertex of a polygon is a corner so here I've got a triangle it's got three vertices vertices is plural for vertex okay a diagonal uh, a diagonal is a segment that connects two non-adjacent vertices of a polygon. So non-adjacent means they're not next to each other. So this one connects to this one over here. It can't connect to this one or this one. Uh, same thing here. The, you can't have a vertex that goes from here to here or here to here, but it connects to these two over there. So uh, you draw all those. Those are all the diagonals right there. A polygon is convex when all the diagonals are entirely inside the polygon. So if you look at this one, all the diagonals are completely inside the polygon. They don't go outside. Okay. Um, if you were to look at... Do I have a concave one over here? I don't. Um, okay, so I'll get you a concave one here in just a second. So um, you can also think of a polygon... Uh, a convex polygon is a polygon where all the corners point outwards. There's no dents in it. So if I had something like this, okay, that is a con that is not a convex um, polygon. It's concave because it has a diagonal that goes from here to here that goes outside the polygon. And the other way you can think of it is it's got a dent in it right there. Okay? Okay, a polygon is concave when one or more of the diagonals extend outside the polygon. You can think of this as a polygon that has a dent. All right, so here we've got some convex polygons right here. Okay, here we have concave polygons over here. And like this one's got five dents in the thing. This one's got two dents in it. This one's got one. That one's got one. Okay, now this thing is not a polygon, but it's still convex because it's got no dents. All right, a regular polygon is a polygon where all the sides and all the angles are equal. Okay, so here you have regular polygons. All those are 90 degrees, all those angles. Uh, all the sides are the same length. Um, all these angles are 108 degrees. All the sides are the same length. All these angles are 60 degrees. Um, all the sides are the same length, and so on and so forth. These are not regular polygons. Even though this one, all the sides are the same shape, or the same length, all the angles are different. Okay, here, uh, if you have a rhombus, the sides can be the same length, but the angles can be different. Okay, so these are not regular polygons over here. All right, how do you find the sum of the measures of the interior angles of a polygon? So, with a square or rectangle, it's pretty easy because you know that they're all 90 degrees, okay? So, you can just add those up and go, hey, that's 360 degrees. But is that true for every quadrilateral? Well, yeah, it is, okay? Every quadrilateral has 360 degrees in it. So, how do I, how do I tell that? Well, I do this. I um, triangulate it. Okay, so I take this thing and I, I draw all the triangles I can from one vertex, which in this case there's only one. Now, um, this, um, this triangle here, this triangle, we know every triangle is 180 degrees, so this triangle is 180 degrees, and that includes uh, this angle, this angle, and this angle. 
And this triangle over here, this angle plus this angle plus that angle is also 180 degrees. And so you put that together and you get 360 degrees. Okay? So uh, the sum of those measures is 360. Now it would even work for something like this. Even some goofy quadrilateral like that. I could divide it uh, like this, and I'd get uh, these three angles right here add up to 180, and these three angles over here add up to 180, and so you put those all together, you get 360 again. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video here and uh, triangulate these other three shapes and see how many degrees that you get out of each one, and then check back and see if you got it right. Okay, so uh, the pentagon, I can triangulate, triangulate it like so. I get 180 degrees, 180 degrees, and 180 degrees. That's 540 degrees. So every pentagon has 540 degrees. Every hexagon We'll have uh, four triangles, each with 180 degrees. That's 720 degrees. Uh, what is this? This looks like a heptagon, so it's got seven sides. So one, two, three, four, five triangles. Five times uh, 180 would be 900. That has 900 degrees in it. And you can always do that. Now, notice there's a pattern. It has four sides. two triangles. Okay, this one has five sides, three triangles. Okay, this one has uh, six sides, has four triangles. And this one over here has seven sides, has five triangles. Okay, notice that uh, there's a pattern. The number of triangles is always two less than the number of sides. Okay, so here's a summary. You can pick a corner. Anyone will do. You can draw all the triangles you can from that corner. So I did that in each one of these. I count the number of triangles and multiply by 180. That's the number of degrees inside the polygon. Now, there's a formula for this. And it's... Uh, Right here. I'm going to have to make this a little thinner, I think, than normal. Let's see here. There's a formula for you to know. S equals N minus 2 times 180. That tells you how many degrees there are in any polygon uh, if you know the number of sides. So let's say I had a 20-sided figure. Uh, so then uh, N would be 20. Okay, so the number of degrees inside that figure would be uh, 20 minus 2 times 180, okay, which would be 18 times 180, which, what is that? That's 3,240 degrees, I believe. Let's see, 18 times 18. Thousand two hundred forty degrees. Okay. So there you have it. I would know that formula if I were you. Okay, find the value of x in the picture below. Okay, so the first thing you need to determine is how many sides does this thing have? So it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven sides. So there's going to be five triangles at 180 degrees. That's going to be 900 degrees. Okay, so I'm only missing this one. I know all the rest of them, so I can subtract all the rest of those angles. So I can start here, 128. That's going to be 2, uh, 7, and um, 7. Okay, and then 120. So that's two, that's five, that's six. Uh, I'm gonna subtract 130. 
two, two, five. Okay, I'm going to subtract um, 115. So it's going to be seven, it's going to be zero, that's going to be four. So uh, let's see, I'm down to 407 degrees. Uh, I take away 145. So that's two, six, three, 262 degrees. And I subtract 140. And I have 122 degrees. And that's what's left for that angle right there. Okay, if you've got a calculator, you can add all those up and just subtract it from 900, and you should be good to go. Okay, so you pause the video right here and do this one. Uh, it says find the value of x. You know, not only find the value of x, find the two missing angles. Find the measures of those two missing angles. So you got a couple things to do here. All right, so go ahead and pause the video and figure this out and then check back. Okay, this thing is a pentagon. It has 540 degrees in it. Okay, and if I add these together, that's 290 right there. Then that would be a 300, 400 degrees. So there's 400 degrees that I know of already. That leaves 140 degrees for the other two angles. Okay. Now, I know that 2x plus 2x has to equal 140, so um, that means that 4x has to equal 140, and when I divide by 4, I'm going to get x is going to be 35, okay? But that does, that's just the value of x, that's not the degrees, so this is 35 right here. Now, each angle is 2 times x, so it's 2 times 30, so this would be a 70 degree angle, and this would be a 70 degree angle, and now I'm done. So hopefully you got that. Okay, a cloud system discovered on Saturn is the approximate shape of a regular hexagon. Now that's kind of weird if you can look at this picture right here. You can see that there. It pretty much looks like a regular hexagon. Um, Find the measure of each interior angle of the hexagon. So basically what that means is uh, what is the measure of that angle right there? Okay, I know, it's a, uh, I know it's a regular hexagon, so I can use the formula S equals N minus 2 times 180. Hexagon has six sides, so 6 minus 2 times 180 which is 4 times 180, which is 720 degrees. Okay, now, here's the thing. If it's regular, all the angles are equal. So I can take this thing and just um, divide it by 6. That's 120 degrees because there's 6 angles. So each one of these angles is 120 degrees all the way around. And this is kind of interesting. It says the hexagon is about 15,000 miles across from, from here to here. So um, you could fit four Earths inside of there. That's really massive. Okay. Find the measure of each interior angle of the regular decagon. So I'm going to let you pause the video. I'm going to let you do this. Remember, a decagon, deck, right here, means 10 has 10 sides, okay? And it's regular so that all of the angles and all the sides are equal. Go ahead and pause the video, figure that out, and then jump back on and check your answer. Okay, so remember, F equals N minus two times 180. Notice I write the formula down. Always write the formula down. Okay, so it's gonna be 10 minus two times 180. 10 minus 2 is 8 times 180. So let's see, that's 0, that's 64, that's uh, 14. So there's 1,440 degrees inside a uh, regular decagon. Now I can also figure out what's each angle. Oh, it says uh, each interior angle. So it does say that. That's not the actual answer. That's just I have to find that to find the answer. There's 1,440 degrees inside there, but there's 10 angles. So I'm going to go ahead and divide this by 10, 
which is 144. So each one of these angles is 144 degrees all the way around that thing. What fun. Okay, so um, these are, we're going to talk about exterior angles here. So here's the thing with the exterior angles. The exterior angles always add up to 360. Every time, it doesn't matter what the polygon is. Now, why does that make sense? Well, if you think about it, let's just take this figure here. If I was walking along this path here, and I got to here, this point right here, and I turned this number of degrees right here, and I started walking in this direction until I got to here, and then I turned this number of degrees, and then I was walking along here, and then I turned this number of degrees, and I was walking along here, and then I turned this number of degrees, I'd be going right back. I, I Basically, I just made a big circle, right? Um, it wasn't a circle shape, but I just I turned one complete turn. Well, there's 360 degrees in a circle. So even if I do that here, I walk this direction, I turn this number of degrees. I'm now going this way, I turn this number of degrees. I'm now going this way, I turn this number of degrees, and now I'm right back where I've started. And so I've made a circle and I've gone 360 degrees. Okay, so it doesn't matter how many sides you have, as long as you get a polygon, if you take one exterior angle at each corner, that's going to add up to 360. So if I want to find X here, I just take 360. I'm going to go ahead and subtract 91. Okay, so that's going to be uh, 269. And then I'm going to subtract 127. So that's going to be 142. And then I'm going to subtract 50, and I get 92 degrees. And that is that angle right there, 92 degrees. Okay, now over here, uh, this one I've got variables. So I know that z plus 26 plus another z plus 124 is going to be 360. So now I can co combine my like terms. I've got z and z is 2z. 26 and 124, that's 150. That's going to equal 360. I'm going to go ahead and subtract 150 from both sides here. So 2z is going to equal 210. And then I divide by 2, and I get z equals 105. OK, so that tells me this angle right here is 105 degrees, because that's equal to z. And it tells me this angle has to be 131 degrees, because that's z plus 26. And then you could uh, check your answers if you wanted to by taking these three and adding them up, and they should equal 360. Okay, so here's your assignment that we're going to do in class next time. And uh, good luck, and I will see you guys later.